welcome to the ninth lesson in the series on software. A major part of computing is file management. You have to save, organize, move, copy and delete files. However, one of the most difficult problems for computer users is the file management system. I've heard many users complain that they saved a file but it seems to have disappeared and is not on the computer anymore. Today we will focus on file management. By the end of this lesson you should be able to Describe the concept of file management Describe the process of folder creation by now, you should have a basic understanding of how computers work and what they do. Let's explore some ways of organizing your computer's filing system so that it meets your needs. Let's consider a real-world example. Imagine that your teacher has just given you a task. She would like you to help her organize the new office she has moved into. The first thing she wants you to do is to place all important letters and memos in appropriately labeled folders. She also needs separate folders for student report cards and results. All report cards older than five years will be taken out of the folders and thrown away to clear space for new records and folders. She would then like you to store these folders in a filing cabinet. Using your computer presents you with a similar situation. Think of the computer as your office and the hard drive on your computer as your filing cabinet. As in an office, you want to organize all your saved work so that everything can be easily found and accessed. Each bit of work you do, like a letter or a spreadsheet, is saved in a file that you give a name. These files are stored in folders on your computer. Folders can also be called directories. So, folders or directories contain all the programs, documents, spreadsheets, photographs and other data files you have created on your computer. They also contain subfolders or subdirectories. Subfolders are folders within the main folder. The folders also have to be stored. They are stored on the drives in your computer. Drives are like filing cabinet drawers that provide storage for the folders. Letters of the alphabet are used to identify the different drives like the A drive, B drive, C drive and so on. Let's find out how many drives are on this computer. To see the drives, I will double click on the My Computer icon. As you can see, on this computer I have a 3.5 inch floppy drive, which is the A drive. If you have two of these drives in your computer, they would be called drive A and drive B respectively. The other drives you see here are the hard drive and the CD-ROM drive. On this computer, the hard drive is drive C and the CD-ROM drive is drive D. In fact, on most computers, the hard drive is normally drive C. The number of drives you have installed on your computer will determine whether you will see any other drive letters. Now that we have looked at both folders and drives, let's take a closer look at files. As we said earlier, files are usually stored within folders. We also said that files can be documents, spreadsheets, graphics, photographs, databases, programs and more. A file name can have up to 255 characters. When you double click on a file, it opens in its associated program. The associated program for a word processing file will be the word processing program you use to type the word file, like WordPerfect. Let's look at an example. I have typed a letter on this computer. I would now like to save it. Can we give the file a name right now? You can see that the folder I will be saving this file to is the My Documents folder. When saving a file, think of meaningful names that you can easily remember, such as Friendly Letter. But what would happen if you and a classmate have both created a Word document file and you have both used the same file name? 
If you both save the file in the My Documents folder, then the computer will give you a message saying that the file already exists and will ask you if you want to replace it. If you select Yes, then the file on the hard drive will be replaced with the file you are busy saving. This could be a problem. Your classmate's file will be replaced with your file. To overcome this problem, you could either use different file names or you could each create new folders to separate your work. If you both create your own folders, you could save all your work separately. For example, you could create folders that you name Salai and Archie. Then it would not matter if you use the same file name. Creating a new folder is a relatively easy process. When you create a folder, you should make sure you are in the correct drive. In this example, we need to be in the C drive. Make sure you have not already opened and selected a folder. If you create a new folder, when you have another folder open and selected, you will be creating a subfolder. Now let's create a new folder. I need to create the folder on the C drive. Before I can do this, I need to find the C drive. I will double click on the My Computer icon. I will now double click on the C drive. What you can see here is a list of all the folders on the C drive of this computer. I do not want to create a subfolder, so I will not select any of these folders by double clicking on them. All I need to do is simply click on the File menu option and select New, then Folder. As you can see, a folder has been created. The folder still needs a name. For this example, I will type in my name. When creating folder names, it's always advisable to make sure to name your folders appropriately so that it will be easy for you to find the files again. If I had letters, memos and spreadsheet files, I might want to create separate subfolders inside this one. In this example, I might want to create a subfolder called letters, another called memos and one called spreadsheets. Creating subfolders is exactly the same as creating the main folder. The difference is that you would need to select the main folder first. I will select the main folder by double clicking on it. I will now create these three subfolders in the main folder. I have a spreadsheet file that I need to save in the new spreadsheet subfolder I have just created. To do this, I will select File then Save. I can click on the down arrow next to the folder name and select the folder called Letters, then the subfolder called Spreadsheets. I can now save the file in my new Spreadsheets folder. Remember the Word document file I typed earlier, Friendly Letter? Well, I would like to move it out of the My Documents folder and into the new Letters subfolder I have created. Before I do this, let me explain the difference between moving and copying a file. If you move a file, a copy of it will no longer be in the folder it was originally placed in. If you copy a file, you will be creating a duplicate copy of the same file in two different places. If you accidentally save a file to the wrong folder or you simply need to reorganize your hard drive, you can easily move files to the correct folders. The easiest way to move the document file I created earlier will be to open Windows Explorer. Windows Explorer is an application used to organize and display a list of file names and folders. To access Windows Explorer, select Start, then Programs, then Accessories, then select Windows Explorer from the menu option. In Windows Explorer, look at the left-hand column which you see here. Click on the folder that contains the file you want to move. For this example, I will need to look in the My Documents folder. When I click on the My Documents folder, it displays the contents of the folder on the right-hand side. This will include any subfolders that have been created. Here's the file I would like to move. Use its name. I will left click the mouse and keep the button down on the file that I want to move. As I move the mouse cursor, the folders on the right hand side will highlight. 
I'm going to move the mouse cursor until I find and highlight the letters folder I created earlier. I must make sure the folder is highlighted before I let go of the left mouse button. Once I leave the mouse button, the file will be moved. The process of copying a file is similar to moving a file. Once again, I will use Explorer. I would like to make a copy of the Word file I have just moved and put it on the A drive. I will first need to insert a stiffy disk into the A drive. Now I need to find the file I want to copy. I know the file has been moved to the Letters folders. Let's look in the Letters folder and find the file. Now press the right hand mouse button and select the Copy option on the menu. I will now move the mouse to 3.5 inch floppy which you see here. I will press the right hand mouse button again and select Paste. The file has now been copied to the A drive. The most important thing to remember when copying and moving files is to make sure the correct folder and drive have been selected before you move or copy the file. As you have seen, copying or moving a file onto the A drive uses exactly the same procedure as copying or moving files on the hard drive. Sometimes you might forget where you save the file. Most operating systems have a way of finding files that have been stored. On this computer, I simply need to select Start, then Find. I can now type in my file name. Make sure you are looking in the correct drive and then select Find Now. Well, that's all we have time for today. Now for your task. With the help of your teacher, you will reorganize the hard drives of your school computers. You need to create a folder and subfolders to save, copy or move all your schoolwork into. Your teacher will tell you what folder names to use. With the help of your teacher, copy or move all the files you have created into these newly created folders. Thank you so much for joining us and don't forget to go to the website for more information. Till then, Salani Kahle.